Welcome to lecture 61, exercise 2. The challenge for this exercise is to create a class named taxpayer. Data fields for taxpayer objects include the social security number, the yearly gross income, and the tax owed. Include a property with get and set accessors for the first two data fields, but make the tax owed a read-only property. The tax should be calculated whenever the income is set. Assume the tax is 15% of the income for incomes under 30000 and 28% for incomes that are 30000 or higher. Write a program that declares an array of 10 taxpayer objects, prompt the user for data for each object, and display the 10 objects. So if you'd like to try this on your own, go ahead and pause the video now and then try it. If not, I'll solve it. Okay, so let's start off by building this taxpayer class. So I'm going to go ahead and add a new class, a new item class called taxpayer. So it says we need to have a couple pieces of data. We need to have data fields for um, social security number yearly gross income and tax owed so let's go ahead and create that data so private string social secure number semicolon that's the first piece of data second piece of data is yearly gross income i'll make that a double so private double yearly gross income semicolon and then the last one is tax owed. Okay, so we have our three pieces of data. Now, it doesn't specify if we should add a constructor or not. So if you want, you can. It's because it doesn't say to add a constructor, I'm not going to because we don't really need one. Even though I always recommend using a constructor, we can still get away with it because we have properties. So it says include a property with get and set accessors for the first two data fields. So that's what we'll start off by making get uh, properties for the first two. So that's social security number and yearly gross income. So we're going to say public string social social secure number get return social security number set social security number equals value so that's the first property the second property public double yearly gross income get return yearly gross income set yearly gross income equals value so we have our two properties so include two properties but make the tax owed a read only property so tax owed is read only so far so let's go ahead and do that public double tax owed get read return tax owed. So that's read only because we only specified a get accessor. It says the tax should be calculated whenever the income is set. So whenever the income is set, we need to calculate the tax and based off of the, this constraint right here. So we should create some kind of private function that handles um, calculating the tax owed. So I'm going to say private void calc tax owed. Now remember, by making it private, only the class itself can use it. That's why no other person from outside the class can call this. Only I can call it when I'm designing the class. So now calc tax owed should be based off of if the tax percent is 15% if the income is under 30000 So we're going to say if yearly gross income we can use either of these we'll say yearly gross income is less than 30,000 then do something we'll do that in a second else if now we could actually just because let me see does it say 
30,000 or higher. So we can just say else in this case. Else, we're going to do the higher rate. So in the first section, the rate is 15%. Uh, so in this case, we're going to say tax owed is equal to the yearly gross income times 0.15 for 15%. So that would be how much tax is owed. For the tax owed for if it's greater than 30,000 or equal to, we'll say if tax tax owed equals yearly gross income times 0.28, I believe. Let me double check that. Yeah, 28%. Yeah, so now our tax owed is calculated based off of this function. Now it says that it should count the tax should be calculated whenever the income is set so whenever the income is set that happens right here in this property the income will only change right here so anytime this is set that needs to happen so what we need to do is once we set the value inside of there we're going to call calc tax owed so every time the yearly income changes right here we'll call this function so that this value of tax owed gets set because it we no one else can set it there's no get I mean there's no public set so the only way is that it gets set privately and it gets set whenever the income is changed we call calculate the tax owed it runs this function which figures out based off of how much income we made how much tax we owe okay so that's everything in our class so far. I think that's all we need. Now it says write a program that declares an array of 10 taxpayer objects, prompt the user for data for each object, and display the 10 objects. So every user needs to enter in a social security number and uh, how much money they made that year, and then we'll at the end display every person's how much money they owe along with the other information as well. So let's create that array. It says array, how much of it is it? 10 taxpayers. So we're gonna say taxpayer array payers equals new taxpayer array of 10. So we have 10 empty slots of taxpayers. Now we need to prompt the user 10 times to enter in these 10 pieces of data. So I'm gonna say for int i equals zero, as long as i is less than 10, or I'm gonna say payers.length, because that is 10, i plus plus. And every single time we're gonna ask the user some questions. We're gonna say, okay, enter payer number, we'll say payer number placeholder, so whatever number we're up to, social security number, so I'll say SSN, so we need to plug in their actual number. So that will be I plus one because we don't actually want it to say zero. We don't want it to say enter payer zero SSN. We want it to say enter payer number one's SSN. So once they enter it in, we'll store that into the social security property of our actual um, taxpayer. So we'll say payers sub I equal, oh, payers sub I dot social security number equals console dot read line. So what it's saying is whatever is typed in right there, because it is a string, whatever is typed in, dump that into the social security number of that person inside the array. Now we're missing one thing actually that I didn't even think about. We're missing one thing before we do this. We actually have to create this payer because every single payer needs to be instantiated and created. New needs to be called in every uh, player. This new right here is only being used for the entire array. That's just to create the array. But then each individual pair or each individual element needs to be get called. Um, so we need to call new on each one. So before we do that, we're going to say player sub, payer sub i equals new taxpayer. So we created that new taxpayer. Then we asked them to enter the SSN for that player. We, we got the SSN. And now we need to ask, ask another question. We need to ask them for the total or the yearly income. So enter pair da, 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 yearly income. So the same thing will happen. And then we'll say payer sub i dot yearly income. Now this yearly income is a double. So I'm going to say yearly income equals double dot parse console dot read line. So we had to convert that string into that double and then we store it into the yearly gross income. So now we had those two pieces of data. Now we know as soon as that is set, we know what's happening behind the scenes. It's going into the set function 
in that property and it's calculating the, the tax owed automatically so that if I really want to at this point I can get how much tax they owed by just displaying the tax owed property by just going console dot right line payer sub I tax owed and that will automatically display the calculated price because it's using properties but I think we need to do that at the end so after this loops runs the entire array will be filled with taxpayers that have and that all the information will be entered so I think that we need to actually create a separate loop and this loop will be responsible for just for printing now all the information for every um, for every taxpayer so we'll make another loop that's the same exact thing And in this loop, we'll just do the printing. So we'll say console.write line. We'll say tax. We'll say taxpayer payer number. We'll plug in their number. And then we'll say comma SSN equals placeholder comma um, income equals placeholder comma and then we'll say tax owed equals placeholder so now we're going to plug in all this information the first one is the number that will that will be i plus one again the ssn is payer sub i dot social security number the income is payers sub i dot income Tax owed is payers sub i dot tax owed. So now all the information is plugged in and it will print all my taxpayer information. So let's go ahead and run this and see what happens. So it starts off by saying enter payer number one SSN. I'm just going to enter in random numbers because to, to, to make this actually go fast. So I'm going to say 555. Enter uh, payer number one yearly income. We'll say uh, 25,000. 666, um, 30,000, 7, Five one two ninety thousand one thousand and he makes let's say a hundred thousand and the last one we'll say their SSN is nine eight nine and their yearly in income is sixty thousand so when I hit enter now it gives me all the information so taxpayer number one his SSN was five 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 his income was twenty five thousand and he owes $3,750. So if we check if that's right, let me open up a calculator. So we have our calculator. Let me go ahead and now and do 25,000, 25,000 times 0.15 equals 3750. 3750. So you can see that the calculation is actually working fine. If we do the one over um, 30,000, or we could do the 30,000 one also, that should be a higher percent. So if we do 30,000 times 0 0.28, 8,400, 8,400, so it's working. So you can go through all these numbers. They, they seem to be correct. Um, our highest income was taxpayer 9. Um, he made $100,000, so he owed $28,000 in taxes.